Richard about what was going on with the National Flood Insurance Program and how, you know, it seems like uh, a couple times a year, mm -hmm. you know, we run into this. So even though it's not quite a couple times a year, it just feels like it, you know, where it run, you know, the, the approval, the government approval runs out and then, you know, we're going to kind of go without uh, the National Flood Insurance Program is going to expire and we're going to kind of be in limbo land for a little bit. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, FEMA flood insurance, there's, there's obviously private carriers out there, but, you know, what should people uh, listening to the show be prepared for should the government have a lapse? And a lot of times they save it and they end up getting it done and extended, but uh, just in case they don't. Right, and Mike and I have been talking about this a little bit, about the uh, so-called kick the can down the road a little bit more, just to yes. keep it extended. At some point they need to longer. overhaul it. Uh, yeah, absolutely they do. And, um, you know, and this is just my personal opinion. It's my personal opinion that the federal government is kind of dragging their feet on this a little bit on purpose because we're starting to see some forms of relief starting to emerge. Things like you already mentioned, the private flood insurance, and very recently we're starting to see things like additions onto your homeowner's insurance policy, uh, Tower Hill, a big insurance company here in Florida. He's doing that as well. Yeah, the endorsement. They, they just recently announced that they're going to be able to endorse flood onto the standard homeowner's insurance policy. So if you're buying a house and uh, and a good quote for you is through Tower Hill, you can just talk to your agent and say, hey, you know what, let's throw flood on there as well. And Instead of having to get it billed through another agency through a or through FEMA. Exactly. Or it, it just makes life a whole lot easier. So that way you don't have two policies, you just have one policy. Um, it's easier for the mortgage companies. They're not sending checks here and sending checks there and trying to figure out, you know, which one which amount goes to who and payments get lost. It's just one policy and it includes flood. And and I think the government is kind of hoping that more and more of the companies will do that and maybe if they drag their feet a little bit maybe then eventually the private just takes over exactly the the uh, the, the private market is going to say you know what we're tired of this let's figure out a solution and and that's I think, as long as we get hit with the big one if we get hit with the big one then it's a whole other right. scenario right more, you know well but. and 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 you know this is all coming out after hurricane irma last year true and that's Hur true hurricane irma was, a, was pretty, a big one it was a big one the, the other side of it is so people i think need to not be as freaked out as they were the last time because there's a lot of options and ways to you know overcome this you know if, if we go through that period there is a chance if you're getting a fema flood policy and it's required by our lender your closing could get delayed it could get um, delayed you know there, there's certainly that chance there are private carrier options though now too that are starting to be a lot more competitive right exactly and and it's again my personal opinion that the real estate industry is too big of a part of our economy for the government to just say you know what we're just going to let this go away and right. uh, and not worry about it for a while I think that would affect the economy in a huge way, and in the end, even though it's kind of stressful and it comes down to the wire many times, something's going to get taken care of, and we're going to have flood insurance, or at least lots of options for flood insurance. Yeah, and I think the the um, the last time that we had the real chaos around this, you know, flood insurance was like, you know, there weren't a lot of private options. It was insanely expensive, and, right. and you know, when the FEMA stuff went away, we're not going to have anything like that this time. It, it, it'll be a, more of a thorn in the side and a little bit of a nuisance, but 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 the reality is, there's enough enough private options out there now to where you're not looking at you know, going from paying two hundred and twenty five dollars to you know thirteen thousand like we saw. I mean, we had a house in Largo a few years ago. That's exactly the scenario. So, mm -hmm. you know, it shouldn't be that drastic this time. But but there are some scenarios where people will have to decide do they want to overpay and pay a little bit more on flood to get their closing done and go through a private carrier, or do they want to? Um, you know, do, do they want to delay it, risk challenges and obstacles, you know, and, and you know, that, that's pretty much what, uh, what, what's going to be in front of us. Right. I'm, I'm actually more concerned about another scenario like we had, three, I, I guess maybe it was three or four years ago when they passed the Bigger Waters Act. You, Correct. You just talked about that. Yeah. When overnight insurance went from, you know, maybe $1,000 to the tens of Correct. thousands of dollars. I think our record... In our office was we had a policy uh, that was sixteen thousand yeah, dollars. we had a thirteen thousand embargo for one year's worth of flood yeah, insurance. Yeah, it, it was insane, and, and so we're, we're not going to see anything like that. So there's no reason to 
to panic. It's just you're, you're going to have some nuisances if it, if it goes past the period and maybe it takes a little bit longer for them to finally renew it. And there's maybe a gray area period where you can't get FEMA flood where you have to get private. So it's, it's, it's not going to be, um, you know, that you know, that big of a deal as it was uh, back then. Right. Uh, but the important part is we are in hurricane season. So mm -hmm. if, if you're thinking about flood, act now before it's too late. If you have a home in escrow, it, you know, get, get it now, get it out of the way before the, the deadline kind of hits. Like, you know, so you, you get a little bit of a heads up that if you're under contract on a house now and you're getting flood insurance, knock it out now. And then secondarily, if you're someone who owns a home and you're thinking about getting flood, do, don't wait until the storm's out there. You know, you can't get it then. Right, exactly. I, I brought something with me today, um, and I'm actually going to talk to your team about this uh, here shortly. It's the, the famous box around Florida. You know, it's yeah. the, uh, um, the guidelines that when something gets inside that box, uh, you know, there's no type of insurance sold, whether it's flood, whether it's homeowners, homeowners yeah. whether it's a moped, whether it's, you know, right. commercial. Um, when, when something gets inside that box, uh, they don't do it. Yeah, yeah and, and, and it's not on that flood. You know. and yeah. Richard, I actually have a question as well uh, with the homeowners insurance when it pertains to like condos, for instance, right. or homeowners associations that have the master policies, mm -hmm. uh, a master flood policy, for instance, is there going to be any effect with that if, you know, let's say FEMA doesn't exist anymore, will there be private carriers, you think, that will, you know, cover a larger scale, you know, like a complex, for instance? Yeah, and, and I haven't really dove into that, to be honest with you, too much. I haven't seen that coming through on on a lot of our companies. Right now, they're concentrating on the individual homes, the individual condos, uh, the individual manufactured homes. Um, but eventually, the, the, the private market finds a way to make sure that business is going to keep getting done. And, and if, if, uh, if the master policies have to go through the private sector, I'm sure that the private companies are going to find a way to make those master policies happen. We have, you know, on the private side, we've got companies out there that are huge, and we're talking like Lloyd's of London, huge. Um, that's one of the big ones doing private market flood. So companies like that obviously have the funding to ensure, you know, uh, high-rise condos and uh, things of that nature, so it'll it'll yeah, happen could, if it's necessary. I could see where that could turn into a nightmare if you know there's a lag there. Let's say FEMA goes away and the the private market carriers don't start you know doing the complexes and condos. You know that from a lending side, then we would likely require each individual unit to have its own policy, right? right. Um, which Again, it's crazy. I mean, you that might be great. on the thirtieth floor, and you but since the property is in a flood zone, you, you still got to get it. Well, yeah, it's, and, it's, and, and and that's an issue already because you know if the condo is let's say a waterfront Clearwater Beach condo, and that building gets um, you know there's a major hurricane and and the building gets condemned because water flooded up to the second story. If you don't have flood insurance on your 30th floor condo, uh, then you might be out a good amount of money uh, in order to, to, because the whole source of the reason your condo is condemned was due to a flood. And, uh, you know, that's kind of a, you know, it, it's a debate that goes back and forth, but I think, uh, you know, the last that we've heard is that if you're on the 30th floor and you're in a flood zone and the building runs the risk of getting condemned, you need to have flood insurance. It makes sense to look at it that way. You know, I can see it from the other perspective, too. Why do I need it? I'm never going to have flood damage. You but, may not, but the building might. Correct, right. and then you've got to pay the exactly. portion of renovating the building or getting assessed right. through the homeowners association to repair you know, some of the damages. Right. You know, it's, well, the, the, I think the, the moral of the story, I think we all kind of agree with this, that, that eventually we want government out of this stuff. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just not meant to be, uh, you know, it's not meant to make a lot of these types of decisions. It, it really needs, needs to be a private market situation. Right. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited for the day that that's the case where we're you know, we're not dealing with the government making decisions for flood insurance where the private market kind of takes over and charges, you know, reasonable rates and, and all this stuff kind of happens. And, and uh, you know, so I'm, I'm definitely excited for that. So More gotta, competition. Yeah, right. yeah, and, and that'll, only, that'll only help. Well, know? and don't forget the National Flood Service has never made money 
right. as, as it was sold to us. Um, right. They've been in debt to the federal.